just did here. Huh? All right. Um, I am calling the meeting of the Castro Valley Unified School District Board of Education to order. Are there any requests to comment? Okay. All right. We will recess to closed session. We're going to reconvene to open session. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Dot Theodore. I have the honor of being the board president. My pronouns are she, her. Um, we welcome everyone into our meeting tonight. Um, during closed session, we did take action on a stipulated expulsion per Ed Code 48918, case number 07-2122 on a motion by Trustee Kuziak and second by Vice President Whitaker, the board voted 5-0 to approve the stipulated expulsion agreement for case number 07-21-22. All right, we will move on to approval of the agenda. Are there any changes? All right. I would move approval of the agenda. Thank you. I second that. Thank you. Are there any questions? Jennifer, your preferential vote, please. Yes. Thank you. Mike? Yes. Gary? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Vice President Whitaker? Yes. Thank you. And I will say yes, so the agenda has been approved. And you'll notice that Vice President Whitaker is joining us remotely today. Um, Vice President Whitaker, can you please read the mission statement? Yes. In partnership with the community, Castro Valley Unified School District educate students in a learning environment that is safe, nurturing, and culturally, culturally responsive. Students are guided by excellent, inspired staff utilizing innovative instruction, curricula, and technology. Thank you. The board respects and encourages the public to comment on matters on the board agenda and within the board jurisdiction. The board fully supports civil discourse and requests that everyone respect each other and their point of view. Individuals who would like to address the board must complete a request to speak form or via the Google form at www.cv.k12.ca.us forward slash public comment forward slash and submit it prior to the start of the agenda item. At the discretion of the board president, speaker cards may be accepted after the start of the agenda item. Your name will be called and you will either come to the podium or to speak or be unmuted during your turn and be allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will be remuted. Individual speakers are asked to limit their comments to no more than three minutes unless the board decides otherwise. There are up to 30 minutes of public comment allowed on each agenda item. With board consensus, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed. This meeting is being recorded to prepare the official minutes. To comply with the Brown Act, the board may listen to comments from speakers under public comment, but can neither discuss nor take action on issues presented. All right, our next item is student board member reports. All right, hello everyone. Well, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, so thank you for all our teachers in this room here. Um, we also had our Trojan Yard Sale fundraiser, which I had mentioned at our last board meeting, which took place on Sunday, May 1st. It was a huge hit, and we made about $2,600. Um, there was also a lot of walkathons that happened recently, the Van Hoy Cougarthon, uh, Chabot Tigerthon. I believe this week is the CVE um, walkathon happening through Friday. Also what happened last week was Battle of the Valley, the football game between Creekside and Canyon. Um, although I went to Creekside, Canyon won, so congrats to them. <laughs> and also, okay, many other events. We also had um, CVHS Prom in San Francisco on May 7th, which is a huge hit. And of course, we have many commencement ceremonies happening at all elementary, uh, middle, and high schools. And as for the high schoolers, we have very stressful AP exams and finals coming up. She has to introduce. Thank you, Jen. Yes, yes. All right, awesome. Okay, at this point, I would like to introduce the 2022-23 school um, school year student board member, Quentin Hansen, who will be fulfilling my role. Um, Quentin, if you'd like to come up and say a few words. Yeah, um, like Jenny mentioned, my name is Quentin Hansen, and I will be the 2022 to 2023 school board member. Um, 
a little bit about me. I've been in Castro Valley Unified School District for my entire student career, K through um, 10. I'm now a sophomore currently at Castro Valley High School. Um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to serve on the board and to help make our uh, school district a better place, help make the students feel more welcome and overall improve our school district to the best of my capabilities. Thank you. Well, welcome to the team. Um, and now I am going to present uh, Jennifer with uh, a gift from the board. We are grateful for your time that you've committed to serve as the student board member. And it's been a real pleasure hearing your questions and your comments, um, responding to the different presentations that we've had and appreciate your um, real engagement with us. So thank you for being a part of our team. Well, thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure, um, specifically working with, um, with Ms. Theodore, who I know is Dot because I was like best friends with her daughter, Daphne, and from calling her Miss Theodore to um, Miss Dot to Daphne's mom, from her picking up in carpools at like 8 p.m. swim practice, driving home in the minivan, to now literally sitting alongside her, it's like absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, but truly it's been a- me. <laughs> But truly, it's been a great year. I'm so blessed to have this opportunity. It's really like opened a lot of um, pathways for me and like what I want to do for my future career. So I'm just really grateful for this year. Thank you. Jenny, I wanted to say all of those things, but I didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> I mean, little Jenny. <laughs> all right. Okay, so now we'll move on to school report and recognitions. Chabot Elementary. That's right. We welcome Chabot Elementary and Dr. Hosseini to start us off. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Superintendent Ahmadi and uh, the CBUSD Board of Trustees for this opportunity. We're very excited to be here with you tonight um, to share some highlights from our school year. Our presentation tonight will highlight some of the tier one interventions and supports that we've implemented this school year to support our students behavioral social and emotional learning needs. We will also share some highlights from um, our student leadership activities this year at Chabot. With that, I would like to begin by sharing our school vision. At Chabot Elementary School, we will meet the social, emotional, physical, behavioral, and intellectual needs of our diverse community of learners to ensure that each student is challenged and successful. At our school, we implement the Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, or MTSS, which is an integrated comprehensive framework that focuses on core instruction, differentiated and student-centered learning, and the alignment of the systems necessary for all students' behavioral, academic, and social and emotional success. So why is social and emotional learning so important? Social and emotional learning is an essential part of human development. It is the process through which we learn to manage our emotions and behaviors, achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive and supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. At Chabot, social and emotional learning is an important part of our instructional practices. The tier one activities and programs that we implement are the foundation for the MTSS framework and have included all of our students. These practices have contributed to creating a supportive learning environment for our Chabot Tigers. And now I would like to share with you some highlights from this year. At Chabot, we practice Paw Power, which is our school-wide PBIS program. The Chabot Paw Power are a set of academic and social skills 
that are Chabot Tigers practice. Students earn paw prints for displaying paw power and are recognized weekly during our Friday flag announcements. This year, our students participated in the SEL ABAR lessons. Our students engaged in age appropriate and developmentally appropriate class discussions and classroom community meetings about a variety of topics, including feelings, conflict resolution, stereotypes, perspectives, culture, and empathy. Additionally, our parents club in collaboration with our school counselor, Ms. Gilmore, purchased calm boxes for every classroom. Calm boxes are a tier one intervention tool for helping students access coping skills. With these calm boxes, students can use a variety of hands-on sensory tools, such as fidgets or the glitter jar, to help with the calm down process when they're experiencing negative emotions. By utilizing the items in the calm box, we're teaching students to implement coping strategies and develop self-regulation so they can learn to regulate their emotions and behaviors independently. At Chabot, we celebrate diversity. It's important for our students to develop self-awareness and social awareness and relationship building skills. It's important for them to be able to recognize their own uniqueness and strengths and to understand that each member of our school community is unique and has different strengths and to respect the diversity that makes our school community beautiful, special and strong. Last week, our student ambassadors, Ria and Sophia, planned a lesson titled the Paw Print Identity Project, which incorporated the core competencies of social and emotional learning. Our students in kindergarten, first and second grade participated in this lesson. Students drew or wrote about their strengths, the things that make them unique and special, their hobbies, interests, and the things they love. A final highlight that I would like to share with you tonight is about our school library. Our school librarian, Ms. Newland, has created various digital resources, including themed slideshows and a digital library that our staff, students, and their families can access. We have a diverse and culturally responsive selection of books in our school library. Ms. Newland continually updates our library selection to reflect our student population and to ensure that the books represent our students' experiences, cultures, and backgrounds so that our students can see themselves in the books that they read. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our Student Council President, Sebastian, who will share some highlights about our student leadership activities at Chabot this year. Good evening. My name is Sebastian Kutcher, and I'm a fifth grader at Chabot. I'm lucky enough to have been in Ms. Bank's class the past two years. I also am the student council president. Over this past year, dealing with coming back to school after the pandemic, we really wanted to bring our Chabot community together. We organized spirit days and kept students informed about fun things happening around school, put together a safety skit, and have lunchtime meetings. Let me tell you a little more about what we have done in student council this past year. A big event that the student council puts on is spirit days. We have had so many fun days from twin day where friends matched, whole classes matched, and groups of friends matched. Other spirit days were sports day, crazy hair day, fat day, and just last week we had May the 4th be with you, also known as Star Wars day. We find spirit days fun to plan. I do reminders the day before over the loudspeaker to make sure no one forgets upcoming events. After being away from school for so long, many students needed a refresher on how to play safely at school. So the student council worked together by coming up with areas on the playground that needed to be focused on. I then wrote a script, we practiced at our meetings, and then made a safety video of our own playground. This was a lot of fun to do, and now it can be used for the years to come at the beginning of school, a year to help new and returning students learn how to be and play safe on the playground. 
I can't begin to tell you how much I have loved this past six years at Chabot. Becoming the student council president has been such a honor. I have learned so much from how to run an office, write speeches, talk with students of all different grades to get their ideas, and how much work goes into organizing events. Thank you for your time. Somebody else is using it, ask them if you can share or take turns. Can you make me some turns? Or can I borrow this door for a little while? So I can have a little bit more time. Okay. Thank you. Look how they're going down the slide, not climbing up. They're also getting down deep breaths, not heavy. Representatives on the school, school monkey bars. Look how they follow the rules. See, they take turns going across and they don't go at the same time. Um, then look, she, she is waiting for her to move so she doesn't hit anyone. Okay. And even they have great manners. so well on the play structure. Um, they look like they're having a lot of fun. No better way to have fun than following the rules. He waits for her to go across, and then, only then, does he go across. They're not pushing anyone off. Everything they're doing is great. Oh. Hello, I'm Annabelle. And I'm Izzy. I'm a your co historian. Isn't everyone playing well on the playground today? Mm -hmm. Let's go check out the tire swing. Look, two people sit on the swing. They have three pushes and then they switch. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. Three. Look at that. It's three how they follow the rules. They take turns going down to make sure they aren't going to hurt anyone when they go down, and they don't push anyone off. Everyone is following the rules today. Hey, what are you doing down there? See ya. Thank you, Sebastian. By the way, they wrote that skit all by themselves. It was all student created. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Miss Natalie Howe, one of our fifth grade teachers and our green team coordinator, who will share some highlights about our green team activities this year.
Hi there, thank you very much. Um, as she said, my name is Natalie Howe. I am a fifth grade teacher at Chabot. Uh, this is my seventh year teaching at Chabot. And just a little fun fact, I actually went to Chabot as a kid. So it's really neat to be able to work at my former school. Um, I've been the Green Ribbon Coordinator for four years now. And each year we aim to do a little bit better with reducing waste and um, educating our students on better practices. Um, trying to encourage them not to run hastily to recess, but instead to sort their trash properly. Um, one of the pride and joys of the green ribbon process is creating a green team. Our fourth and fifth graders are given an opportunity to thoroughly learn the proper disposal of waste. And then they go out during recesses for the younger grades and as well as lunches. Um, and they help the kids sort their trash properly. Again, encouraging them to slow down and pay attention to where each item goes. Um, it's neat because it gives them a chance to show responsibility and be good role models for the other students in the younger grades. Um, it's something that the younger kids look forward to. And it's kind of neat because if I'm out there monitoring, um, I'll see third graders who are really going above and beyond making an effort to pause and sort. One of the hardest things for them to do is to take the napkin out of that little spork plastic wrap thing um, and put it in the organics because it's real easy just to take it and throw it all in the trash since most of it would otherwise go in the trash. Um, so when I see little younger kids going above and beyond, just recognizing them and saying, hey, you know, when you're in fourth grade or fifth grade, you, you could be on green team. And if that's something you're interested in, you know, keep that in mind. And it's just a neat pro um, program and working with CV Sand to help do a better job, keep the planet a, a safe and a live place for our future generations. Um, it's really been a great opportunity for me. Um, I've learned a lot, the kids have learned a lot, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite up Camelia Muller. The governance team, along with Chabot Elementary School, are proud to honor Camelia Muller as their outstanding student. Camelia is an exceptional young lady who embodies all the characteristic traits of a true tiger. She is a dedicated student, compassionate friend, positive role model, talented musician, determined athlete, creative artist, and so much more. At just 10 years old, she has found a perfect balance between young heartedness and maturity. Her sense of humor and kind spirit leave a smile on the faces of those fortunate enough to call her a friend. In the classroom, Camelia is committed to working hard and strives to do her best on all tasks. She truly understands the value of perseverance and determination. She is an eager helper and has set a positive example while serving as a member of the green team. She finds joy and satisfaction in challenging herself and feels a strong sense of pride when she reaches her goals. We are so proud, not only of what she has accomplished during her time at Chabot, but also of the wonderful young lady she is and the amazing woman she has the potential to become. The governance team joins Chabot Elementary School in honoring Camelia Muller as an outstanding student. Camelia, do you want to introduce anyone who came with you this evening?
it was 2014 when we started there. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, Maisie has supported so many events that we would need a book in which to write them all. Through her work as a parent volunteer, from serving on the executive board of the Chabot Parents Club for five years, four years as president and one year as vice president, to volunteering in classrooms, Maisie has supported the vision of our school. She has helped plan and organize many community building activities and school fundraiser events for Chabot. She has committed countless hours in planning and organizing these events. Maisie has been a room parent several times in different classrooms for each of her sons, chaperoned at countless field trips, and has also served on the Chabot School Site Council. In addition to her volunteer work, Maisie is also a substitute teacher who very quickly became the go-to substitute. Most recently, she has become an integral part of the LPAC testing team throughout the district, specializing in remote testing. Where Maisie sees a gap, she fills it usually with her own time and outstanding, outstanding dedication to Chabot. We thank Maisie for everything she's done for our students and for our school. We will miss her at Chabot. The governance team joined Chabot Elementary School in honoring Maisie Fitzgerald as an outstanding volunteer. Yeah. You get this. And you get a hug. And you get to keep this too. This piece. Yeah. Maisie, do you want to say a few words and introduce anyone who came with you this evening? So my family isn't here because it's one of those divide and conquer sports nights. Um, but there are several members of boards that I've had, boards that I've led at Chabot. Amber Coster, Leah Mendez, Brooke Johnson. And it's because of them that I was able to keep going for as long as I did, because I couldn't have done it without them and Melissa Kuziak and other board members. Right? Yep. Melissa Kuziak, who's not here tonight because she's also at a sports game. Um, and also, it was a pleasure to work alongside all of our Chabot teachers. It was definitely a work of love. And it's kind of weird to be leaving after all these years. But thank you very much. All right, comments from the board. Well, first of all, Camelia, congratulations. You know, when I was reading your very long list of accomplishments, friends, student, musician, athlete, artist, green team, it just kept going on and on. So I'm very impressed and congratulations. I also think it's awesome that the elementary schoolers are enjoying being on the green team and really like recognizing the importance of sorting because that's something that I know is even high schoolers who are 10 years older than these students somehow still struggle to do on a daily basis at the high school. I also think it's very impressive that the student council took the initiative to put together and perform that safety skit. Um, you know, the main thing I've learned about student leadership or like any type of leadership is that like when you see a problem, you take the initiative to fix it. And Sebastian, I'm very impressed that you led the student council to accomplish this at such a very young age. Um. I promised Trustee Howard earlier today that um, I'll try not to ugly cry and um, try to keep my comments as brief as possible. Um, I, so much of why I'm in this room right now has to do with this community out there. And I'm so proud of everyone who's here at this Chabot community because it's indicative of all these amazing school communities we have in Castor Valley that really make Castor Valley what it is. And it's been so impressive to see its evolution as a parent there. And it's, um, I'm grateful for everything that, that that community has done. I wanted to make a shout out to Camelia. Uh, she was one of my first girls in Cub Scout Pack 703 and is one of the most delightful, kindest uh, kids you'll ever meet. Congratulations on being honored tonight. Uh, Maisie, you're amazing. Um, and thank you for all you've done for our community uh, in supporting, in supporting um, Chabot Cub Scouts uh baseball so many other things that you do for our community and um i want to just share that appreciation to you um sebastian um i've thought about this a lot uh, through the year about how we've missed like two and a half years of school right and so kids don't know how to to climb on 
uh, different the, the 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 playground equipment or I, I or this how to use the swing of death as as Teddy and Ollie like to call it. So I, I'm I'm impressed that you were able to show other students how to do that. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I just again want to um, thank everyone from Chabot, Mrs. Perator, you're here, Dr. Hosseini, thank you for being here, both of you, everyone. Um, I'm excited to 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 also see uh, a teacher of the year from Chabot here tonight as well. So. Um, Thank you for modeling a lot of what we believe in this uh, in this district. Um, it, when we talk about all means all, I see that in practice at Chabot. I've seen that evolution in our practices there in the school community and what these and what our kids are doing there and what our staff are doing. So um, thank you very much for being here tonight. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. I enjoyed it. Uh, I really did like the video about Paw Power. That was a lot of fun. I'll try to remember those lessons if when next time I'm on the bars over there. Uh, we should go on the swing together. Yeah, that'd be great. I like that one that was yeah. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, I think it's great that the green team is doing all that work. Uh, CV San is a wonderful partner of the district. And so it's great for uh, little kids to uh, learn how to sort the trash and come home and teach all of us adults how to do it right. So thanks for the presentation. And finally, uh, congratulations to Maisie and Carmela, Carmelia. So uh, thanks for all your work down there. Uh, so uh, Chabot Elementary, this was uh, really a lovely presentation. Um, I think a lot of people said some of the things I was going to say, but I also wanted to um, say the having a very diverse um, library uh, is very important. And it was really interesting to see all the different materials there and the media as well. Um, congratulations to uh, Camilla and Maisie. Um, the green team is great and the playground uh, safety video was uh, really funny and cute and adorable. Thank you. Sorry, Lavender, I, I'm staring at your face and I still forgot to call on you. No worries. Um, I just want to quickly uh, re-congratulate uh, Camelia and Maisie uh, for your service and um, dedication and also for being such a great student. But I just quickly, uh, Dr. Husseini, I just wanted to mention there's there's one piece that nobody else mentioned that I want to just point out. The, the, the point you made about teaching kids coping skills, I think that was such a beautiful thing especially right now and what we've been through with the pandemic and and kids learning how to interface with one another again so i just really want to thank you and the school team for for doing it i know us, some of us adults need that so i'm so glad our kids are getting in that at such a young age thank you. you know how hard it is to be like one of the last ones poor dot to, to not repeat, but I just want to thank you for your leadership. I know Ms. Peritor is here as well, and the teachers and staff at Chabot for really truly walking the talk about MTSS, multi-tiered system of support in every way, academic behavior, social, emotional. So that's awesome. I love the videos. I think you should have your own, Sebastian, you need your own YouTube channel if your parents allow you. <laughs> that was so cute. That was great. I also am so happy to see our ambassadors, our high school ambassadors from the District Student Leadership Alliance, which uh, Jenny is a part of as well, with Sophia and Ria coming to school and doing activities. And that's really what we want to do throughout the school districts. And um, that's that's wonderful to see. Um, great job with the green um, green team. We need it. Um, Camelia, I when I was reading about you and when I um, you know, listen to everybody talk about you is I love your spirit and your positive attitude. It carries you through and it's so, so important. And Maisie, thank you for everything you've done for Chabot and District Wide. I cannot tell you how important it is to have a dependable substitute who's also a parent who does all of this work. But I also want to thank you for everything you've done at the Parent Leadership Council that you've been a part of. I've really enjoyed working with you. Thank you so much. Well, I get to go last. Um, so, you know, as the presentation is going on, I'm making little notes of things that I want to say and thank you for, and everyone has said all of the things. I've checked everything off. Um, so I will say congratulations, Maisie. Um, thank you for all the work that you do for our district and congratulations, Camelia. 
can't wait to see what the future holds for you as you um, go up to middle school and then to high school. Um, uh, thank you for everyone for being here tonight and representing your school. Um, Dr. Husseini, do you want to introduce any of your staff that are here? Sure. Um, we have Ms. Howe, who's one of our fifth grade teachers. Uh, we have Ms. Stacy Kutchen, who's one of our RTI paraprofessional uh, staff members. Uh, we have Ms. Judy, who is one of our campus monitor staff members. Um, Ms. Maisie Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. um, who's our volunteer of the year. Um, we have some parents from our um, parents club who have served on our parents club in previous years. We have our uh, Masonic Elementary Teacher of the Year, Ms. Jessica LeVang. Um, yes. We have Ms. Julie Goshru, one of our second grade teachers. And I, I, and we have Mrs. Peritor, our um, former principal. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, we're going to take a short recess, so if there's anybody who needs to leave this evening and do homework or help their kids with homework or show up at a sports event, um, you're welcome to leave, but you're also very welcome to stay. We have exciting things on our agenda, such as um, discussion about MTSS and honoring um, some very special people in the room tonight. So five minutes, we'll um, take a break.
uh, break. We're going to get started with the rest of our meeting now. <laughs> I'll use it with a smile. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, we now have some presentations and recognitions that we're going to make this evening for some very special people. And we are going to start with um, Tri-Valley Teacher Induction Project Annual Reports. Good evening, and thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to come and speak a little bit about our teacher induction program here in Castro Valley Unified School District. We're fortunate to be part of a consortium called the Tri-Valley Teacher Induction Program that is um, made up of the schools in Castro Valley, Livermore, and Dublin. And we're fortunate, we'd like to thank Leslie Williams, who's our director, who has joined us today. So Leslie, thank you so much for coming and joining us this evening. Um, I'd like to introduce our coaching team Unfortunately, several of them are had prior commitments and they're so sorry they couldn't be here today. But the first person is Megan um, Sutcliffe. She is our awesome coordinator of the program. Also Lauren Kotcher and Don Goulart. Today, this evening, we have Joanna Hogan. And what's really exciting about Joanna is that she will be a full-time TV tip coach next year who has the background of special education. And so we are so pleased to be able to bring that expertise. And I'm Pat Eppard, uh, also one of the TV tip coaches here. The TV induction programs all across the state are state mandated programs to support the new teachers that are entering the profession and a required part of their, um, required in order to get their clear uh, permanent credential. I'm going to turn it over to Joanna that will talk a little bit about actually the several things that we're going to talk about um, would be our overview and the background of our program, the accreditation update, a short video of several of our teachers who've been part of the program and what they've gained from the program, and then our year two celebrations. And at this point, I will turn it over to Joanna. Thank you. Um, so, like Julie Andrews likes to say, I think we have to start at the very beginning um, to help everybody understand a little bit about what induction is. The easiest way to understand induction is seeing it within the context of the credentialing system in California. Um, California has a two-tiered credentialing system for teachers, and that is thanks to Senate Bill um, 2042 that I think was passed in 1998, 1998 we're going to say that. Um, the first tier preparation um, is a university preparation program that leads to a preliminary credential. University programs prepare candidates to obtain preliminary teaching credentials through successful completion of coursework, fieldwork, which is student teaching, um, and then a performance demonstration of their knowledge and skills, which is called the TPA or uh, Teacher Performance Assessment. The second tier preparation is a required two-year job-embedded individualized coaching program that's called induction that all new teachers must complete um, in order to earn their clear or professional credential. The term induction just refers to the support provided to teachers in the first two years of practice with a preliminary credential. Induction programs must be based on California standards for the teaching profession and on statewide induction program standards. In Castro Valley, TVTIP is our induction program and on top of being based on those standards, it also um, is based on the work of a variety of prominent researchers um, in the education field. Oh, we skipped a slide. So uh, the slide would have looked like um, a little list of why induction is important, because you know now what induction is, but you might be wondering why we need it. Um, first and most obviously, it's a state requirement. Um, but beyond that, induction programs help create highly effective teachers that work with students every day. And we know that highly effective teachers improve learning outcomes for students. Induction also contributes to teacher recruitment and retention, which builds highly devoted and skilled teaching staffs in our schools. Um, in fact, our data shows that after five years, 86% of teachers who completed in our induction program continue to work in Castro Valley. And most graduates remain in the teaching profession, even if they're not here in our district. Um, by comparison, the national teacher retention average is 54%. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Pat now for a little bit about accreditation. 
So again, we were stating that this is a state mandated program, which means it needs to be accredited by the state. And as you look at the slide, you'll notice that there are five stages as the part of the accreditation process. Fortunately, we've gotten through the first four stages. Uh, back in October, we were granted the provisional program approval, which is allowing us to fully implement our program. And for the next couple of years, what we're really working on is, first of all, of course, implementing it, but refining it. In two to three years, the state will send in a review team to look to see how we're doing in terms of the implementation, and also to continue to give us feedback so that we can keep building our program to be better and better and to support our teachers in the very best way possible. Um, and each year, our awesome coordinators come up with a theme or a focus for the year. Um, and with our new accreditation process, like Pat was just talking about, the coordinators really wanted to be very focused on how they planned coaching professional development. So with that in mind, they developed the theme of coaching with heart. And that's been at the heart, if you will, um, of our coaching all year. And that is an acronym that um, sort of stands for developing habits of mind with an equity lens by aligning our processes and reflecting as a team. And it, like I said, has guided our work both as a consortium and with our individual teachers um, all year. Thanks, Amy. So in terms of the program overview, it is a two-year program that supports both our general ed as well as our special ed educators. Um, one of the key pieces of the program that we like to emphasize is something we call just-in-time support. And what we mean by that is that when there's a need in the classroom, because of the structure of our program, we're able to get into the classrooms and meet with the teachers within a day or two. The other piece that you'll see there is the individualized and job embedded. And what that means is that instead of sending a list of generic possible solutions to problems, we're able to go in, look at the teacher's teaching style, and look at the unique needs of the students so that when we come up with the next steps or the intervention, that the chances of getting a high leverage instructional practice that was gonna, most likely will lead to success is what we're looking for. And so that we think is one of the real strengths of the program. That leads us to the goals and you'll see the very first goal is how do we enhance the learning for each student. This year in Castro Valley with our five coaches, we're supporting 36 new teachers and they in turn are touching the lives of over 6,000 of our students. When, as we continue to work and support our teachers, what we're looking at is how do we advance their performance, helping them to become reflective and thoughtful in their, or their practice, really looking to see how they can meet the needs of the students. In terms of professional development, it is one-on-one -on -one when we get to go in and talk specifically about what's going on in their classrooms. But in addition to that, for instance, if they go to a staff development day that we have in our district, after those days, we are able to go in and meet with each of our teachers and look again, given the information that you have received and given your style and the needs of your students, how can we individualize that? And again, I'm going to say the same term, find those high leverage instructional strategies to build that success, hopefully more rapidly than the sort of do the guess and hope it works kind of situation. That leads to teacher success happening more quickly building the teacher efficacy, as well as, as we mentioned already, the retention of our teachers and keeping them here in Castro Valley. Um, on top of all of that, we like to get feedback from our stakeholders, um, including and especially teachers, so that we continue to keep the program relevant and meaningful for everybody involved. Um, so we take surveys twice a year, and this year's survey data from the mid-year survey from teachers let us know that they believe that these aspects of our program most positively impacted their teaching practice. Um, I don't I can take a look at those. I don't feel like I need to read them to you, but um, I did want to emphasize that the teachers this year when they were surveyed expressed the most gratitude for the emotional support and the managing of job related stress in this somewhat unusual school year. Um, so I'll leave that there. Um, and so we might be a little biased, but we think that TV tip is an invaluable part of this district's teacher recruitment, development, and retention framework. Um, but don't take our word for it. We asked some of our current and former participants to speak about the value of TV tip and their development as teachers, and here is what some of them said.
Hi, my name is Rachel Prentice, and I am a teacher on special assignment for social emotional learning, as well as anti-bias and anti-racist teaching and learning. I'm also a TV tip graduate. And what I would say about the program is that it really allows you to have someone to discuss your practice with on a regular basis, reflect on what you are doing well and what you wanna become stronger with. Um, as well as just building the foundation for who you want to be as a teacher. Um, so for me, social emotional learning was really important in my classroom. And so my coach was able to constantly bring me things that I could try or research and just build that foundation for who I wanted to be as a teacher in the classroom. Um, so Hi, my name is Carly Fleck. I'm an SBC mild moderate teacher at Canyon Middle School. I teach math and social studies to all grade levels. The TV Tip program has made a huge impact on how I teach. The first couple years I started, I had a really challenging group of students with behaviors and Pat the Unicorn, we like to call her, helped me manage and figure out a classroom system that would help benefit my students and build community around our classroom. Um, without this program, I don't know how long I would have lasted on my own. It's been an amazing experience and I have talked to fellow teachers and new teachers alike and told them how amazing the program is and how lucky we are to have it. And without this, I don't think I would be where I am today. So I just wanna say thank you to the TV tip program. It's been an amazing adventure and I'm so glad that I have been able to have you with me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kate Meister. I'm a uh, second year history teacher um, at middle school. Um, as far as advice going forward for those new teachers, I would like to say, take advantage of all the observations um, that your coach is there to give you. If you have a rough class, have them come in and watch you and tell you what they think is going on. Have them watch your best class and tell you what they think is going on there. Because sometimes having that external um, person come in can be like, oh, you do this then and you didn't do that here. And it's just been so, so helpful. Um, but just know that TV tip and your coach is just there to give you encouragement and support you in the best way possible. Um, and I, I've never, it's just been no judgment. There's no judgment. It's just such a positive space. And um, it's a fantastic program that's really helped me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is John Gavea and I finished TV tip last year. Um, I don't know where I would be without TV tip. My coach last year helped me so much. Um, the main thing my coach helped me with was just being someone that was there to listen. There are a lot of struggles, a lot of frustrations, a lot of worries, and having someone there that is there to listen and help you get through that is tremendous. Uh, my TV tip coach also helped me um, find ways to be intentional so that everything I do in the classroom has a purpose and not to be so hard on yourself. Um, this is a very hard occupation and sometimes we think, oh, I'm making these mistakes. I'm not being doing a good job teaching, but everybody goes through that. And sometimes when we think we're having a big mistake, it's really not that big of a deal. <clears throat> and having a coach there with that knowledge to pick out what you should work on and what you should focus on is tremendous. Yeah. I am thrilled to be in Castro Valley because they offered t the TV tip induction program. When I was a student teacher, I was placed in Castro Valley and I stayed there because of the TV tip uh, program. And because of the TV tip, I decided to stay there even after induction because I felt I was indebted to this amazing program. Um, TV tip. Uh, definitely gave me time that I didn't have as a first and second year teacher. It allowed me to focus on what I didn't know how to do, which was teach and hone my skill. TV Tip has been uh, an amazing experience for me. I've been very fortunate to have a supportive coach who has been there pretty much every step of the way with my developing curriculum, developing professional development. Uh, I have just been very, very fortunate. Um, TV Tip has really changed how I view teaching, um, how I interact with my students. It has really been life-changing, career-changing, just overall amazing. I feel very lucky 
to be in the position that I'm in. Um, and I wish that everyone who is getting there or clearing their credential would have this opportunity. Um, when I was asked to talk about TV tip and how it's impacted me as a first year teacher, the one thing that comes to mind is that my coach is great at holding up a mirror to me and showing me the things that I do really well and then pointing out the things that I can improve upon. Um, if you take your craft seriously and you want, you want to improve, uh, the TV tip coaches have all the resources and, and all the knowledge and experience to help you become better. Uh, and that's really what our goal should be. Um, my advice to first year teachers, be humble, uh, know that you don't know everything at this point um, and that there's more to gain from uh, leaning on and listening to and asking questions of your TV tip coach. Um, I don't, I personally don't think I ask enough questions, but I know that um, my coach has a wealth of experience and knowledge and uh, she makes the coaching just seem like a conversation between two friends, which to me is the best way to coach somebody. We are uh, appreciative of the teachers who were able to share some of their thinking and their experiences with TV tip. And I just want to take a moment. How many of you in the audience have been part of our TV tip program? I just want you to see how many of them have been it. And we have enjoyed and appreciated all of you. The, the next part is just to honor our teachers who have completed two years of TV tip. Um, they have been working with their coaches for two years, and at the end of the two years, they've become eligible to receive their uh, clear or permanent credential. And so we'd like to salute them right now. Our elementary year two graduates, Milton Costa, Julie Ponsford Holland, Amy Prune, Kara Sibbett, uh, Dara Stapleton, Devin Moran, Joanna Trasky. And our secondary year two graduates are Brian Andre Blackman, Renu Shavala, Ashley Claypool, Alec Duferena, Ashton Fauche, Erica Harris, Kathy Levi, and Kate Meisert. Give them all a round of applause in absence. Again, we are really appreciative of the hard work of our year two graduates. And again, and we'd like to thank the board and the cabinet for giving us this opportunity to share a little bit about our teacher induction program here in Castro Valley, the TV tip program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I. Uh, before we end, I just want to say a few things because we do have, I know we have a lot of our teachers here, but also community members. I think it's really important. First of all, thank you, Ms. Anderson, Leslie Anderson. Uh, she's amazing. But the five team, this is an A++++, lots of plus team. They're amazing. And when we started teaching, for example, when I started teaching, I'm not sure about Ms. Dr. Ryman, you're much younger than I am, but I didn't have we didn't have bits, uh, which it was called before, or TV tip. You were on your own. And if you can imagine, really, if you were in your own classroom with the doors and, and all of that, I was fortunate. I actually had, was in a pod in 1960s. They had those pods. But, uh, but it's really important to understand that this is not evaluative, and you kept hearing from teachers. It's coaching, it's mentoring, it's supervision, it's, not, it's, it's just coaching, it's not evaluation. So you're never afraid to say, oh, I made a mistake. And that's really, really important. And many districts are not able to have a program like this, thanks to all of you and Ms. Anderson and our partners in Dublin and Livermore, because then teachers would have to go somewhere else to get this done. And it's not the same, the job embedded, just in time. I mean, it's invaluable. And I just, you know, the, it's just so critical. I want to thank you for everything you're doing. And their newsletters are 
unbelievable. It's full of information, full of resources. I know I read it, we all read it and love it. Um, and by the way, Mr. Small is too humble. He's an awesome teacher. <laughs> he knows how to teach. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for your presentation. Wait, <laughs> before you leave, <laughs> we, we may have some comments and questions from board members, so please don't leave quite yet. I wanted to congratulate you on, uh, on starting your new role uh, in the program. Um, you know, I was thinking about Sebastian's presentation about using playground equipment. Um, this is about know-how and knowledge transfer. And uh, there's a lot you don't learn in college, right? And getting your credential. And it's, it's really uh, fascinating to see how intentional we are here. Do we see a difference in the type of people that we recruit to our district because of this? That I, I'd love to know over time if we've seen a, a delta because of that. Um, but I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I, I would love to, to sort of know like qualitatively if we've seen like a different type of teacher coming to our district because of this. But I appreciate all of your efforts you're doing. I'm a little new to the party here. I'm not sure about the numbers, but Pat, do you have? I don't think they have numbers, but I do think they have individual um, stories of people who know about our induction program, our support program. And when they hear about it, they say, okay, which districts have this program? And they really do try to get a job in one of our three. Actually, there's a fourth district that has a very similar program because the, it, the qualitatively, the program that you are you have here in Castro Valley is quite, I want to say, amazingly supportive of our new teachers. Um, I suspect that somebody, maybe Dr. Zamora, might have some specific information for you. Thank you. I just say thanks for your presentation and for the program. You know, I think anything that can be said about the program was said more eloquently by your student teachers who are graduating this time. So uh, it's a wonderful program. I'm really glad we have it. Thanks for, for putting it on for our teachers. Um, yes, thank you very much for uh, helping me understand how that um, uh, the TV tip program works. Um, because, you know, uh, being a teacher myself, I had like someone come from Cal State maybe every six weeks or every two, two months or something like that. That was the, the help uh, kind of thing that I got. This sounds um, like much more supportive and um, also is dealing with all of the different realms now that um, teachers have to deal with that at that time wasn't part of the credential program. Sounds like you're doing really a great job. Our program requires that we support give teachers at least four hours a month, at least four hours a month, which is basically an hour a week. But again, if there's a particular need that comes up because of the structure that you have allowed us to have in our program, we're there the next day or we're on the phone <laughs> that night, you know, being able to help them think through whatever they're facing in that moment. So thank you. Dr. Raymond, you wanted to? Sure, I just wanted to acknowledge something very quickly, or perhaps not too quickly. When we look in the back of the room and we see that strategic plan uh, that really captures what our district is all about, we have that statement, all means all, which is our way of saying that every student, regardless of what they need, regardless of what they're coming to our district with and what supports, um, are needed so that they can reach the very top level, we're going to make sure we lift students up to that level. And that begins with having amazing teachers. Um, and I want to say for Joanna and Pat, and also Megan, who couldn't be here, um, that you're always a part of that planning and the work that we do uh, to make sure that not only does that reach um, all of our teachers who are experienced, but so that our new teachers get that and then bring that feedback to us. And we're so appreciative to have leaders like you to make sure that that's happening. And it's so important to our kids. So thank you so much. Vice President Whitaker, did you want to add anything? I know there's not much to add. I just wanted to congratulate the teachers that, that went through the program successfully. And we're so lucky to have you here at the district. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really great to, to hear all about that. Thank you. Thank you very much.
All right, we're going to move on to um, recognizing Castor Valley Unified School District Teacher of the Year nominees, and this will be presented by Trustee Adams. So uh, this is Site Teachers of the Year nominees. Each year, we ask teachers to nominate their peers that have demonstrated outstanding leadership and service to the students, their school community, and have made a positive impact on school climate. This year's Site Teachers of the Year are, um, the first one, Jessica Howard. Could we have the teachers after they get certificates stand here? Because we're going to take a nice picture of all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Next, uh, Jessica LeBang from Chabot Elementary. <laughs> Nikki Cox, Independent Elementary. Nancy Galloway, Jensen Ranch. Jaime Hora, Marshall Elementary. Or Gigi Katrina, Palmeras Elementary. Chris Domingo, Stanton Elementary. Shelly Schumann, Vinoy Elementary. <laughs> Diane DeYoung, Kenya Middle School. Machado, Creekside Middle School. Amanda Staub, Castor Valley High School. Matt Hoffman, Redwood High School. And Joanna Lee, Castor Valley Adult and Career Education. The governance team congratulates the Teacher of the Year nominees.
Congratulations, teachers. Our next recognition is for Castro Valley Unified School District Masonic Teachers of the Year. So once a year, the local Masonic Lodge recognizes and honors the contributions and dedication to educational excellence of two teachers in our school district, one elementary, one secondary. The governing team is pleased to honor this year's Masonic Teacher, teacher of the Year, Jessica LeBang from Chabot Elementary School and Diana D. Young from Canyon Middle School. Can we have the two of you come up? Ms. LeBang and Ms. DeYoung have worked diligently to improve the quality of education in Castro Valley. Through their combined efforts, they have expanded and enhanced the opportunities for all students to learn and be successful in a supportive, caring, equitable, safe environment. The governance team congratulates Jessica LeBang and Diana DeYoung as the Masonic Teachers of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next recognition is Alameda County Office of Education Teacher of the Year nominee. Nancy Galloway. The overall purpose of the California Teacher of the Year program is to honor the profession chosen by 300,000 persons in the state to heighten the interest in teaching as a career. The program affords the opportunity to bring attention to teachers who successfully employ strategies to increase academic success and to narrow the achievement gap with a range of diverse students. The California Teacher of the Year is selected through recommendations from each county within California. All candidates as representatives of Alameda County are considered exemplary in the teaching field. Nancy Galloway is an exceptional physical education teacher at Jensen Ranch Elementary School who pushes students to high levels of achievement while supporting their individual needs. Mrs. Galloway is therefore nominated by Castro Valley Unified School District as Alameda County Teacher of the Year. If selected as Alameda County Teacher of the Year, she will move to compete for California Teacher of the Year. The governance team joins Alameda County Office of Education in honoring Nancy Galloway as Alameda County Teacher of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Our final recognition for this evening is Alameda County Office of Education Classified Employee of the Year nominees. So I get the pleasure of uh, introducing the Classified Employees of the Year. Uh, this program was sponsored by the California Department of Education, and it highlights the contributions of classified school employees who support the education of California's public school students. They're recognized in different categories. Uh, our classified employees are critical members of our Castro Valley Unified community. They make it possible to support our students each and every day. We appreciate their deep commitment to students, staff, and families. 
Please join me in congratulate, congratulating this year's Classified Employees of the Year. And the first one is in the category of custodial maintenance. It is Manny Pita from... Next is in food and nutrition services from Canyon and the Alameda County winner, Jane Luck. Next is in the category of health and student services from Creekside, Terry Braxton Simonson. <laughs> Next is a uh, para, uh, excuse me, paraprofessional from Stanton. It is Maria Fisher. <laughs> Next is the skilled trade services in, in maintenance operations and transportation. This is another Alameda County winner. It is Jimmy Baum. Finally, in the clerical and admin services from the district office, Susie Leonardo. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all of our honorees tonight. We are so grateful for all of your service. We literally could be nowhere without the, the work of all of our teachers and our staff. So thank you very much. Um, we're going to take a quick recess um, in case any of you need to leave to take care of business at home. But like I said earlier, you're welcome to stay.
move on to uh, our reports from our bargaining units. Um, CS, is there anyone from CSEA? Oh. Hi, um, my name is Samantha Brown. I'm the secretary of chapter 52. I'm here on behalf of President Hill, who has another commitment tonight. Um, the room is empty, but I wanted to just go ahead and um, let you all know that with two and a half weeks of school left, we are focused on working to finish the 21-22 school year strong and make the uh, end of the year activities great for students and staff. Uh, classified School Employee Week is coming up on May 16th through 20th, and it is celebrated the third week of May. Our chapter will be holding an event for our chapter members, and the event will be May 20th. Uh, it's going to be the first time in three years that we're able to hold a social event, and we're really looking forward to spending time with our members in person. Um, we Recently, a few minutes ago, um, six of our members were recognized for their dedication and service, and the work that they do is often behind the scenes and anonymous, but their ability to be resourceful and resilient every day as they work through the challenges that arise make a difference in the students of Castro Valley Unified. We're proud of the work that they do and of all of our employees, as well as those that were recognized tonight on a daily basis, and we're thrilled to see these members recognized by the governance team. So congratulations to the nominees for a classified employee of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is Mark here? Okay. All right. Do we have any requests for comments? Okay. Hi, Bill. Welcome to our meeting. Hello. Hi, my name is Bill Taroli. I'm a parent of a student independent elementary. I am commenting tonight to share a concern over ensuring all really does mean all and that we're set, setting programs up for success. I'm quite excited that we have new options like the Play CV Expanded Learning Opportunities Program, particularly since our family has experienced less than successful outcomes and at least one other sanctioned program for our son with autism. I've been careful to ensure expectations are clear for ourselves and for PlayCV before signing up for summer camp. In trying to clarify PlayCV support for students with disabilities and finding that was uncertainty, uh, I did some further research about ELOP. I found that the CDE ELOP site very explicitly indicates that an LEA must operate the ELOP pursuant to its requirements of section 46120 including the development of a program plan and that the plan needs to be approved by the LEA governing board in a public meeting and posted on the LEA's website. While I have been able to find the ELOP page on the CVS USD's website, I can find no evidence of an ELOP plan document. Why does it matter? The guidance for creating these plans indicates that there is a section dedicated to describing how the program will, among other things, serve disabled students. So of course, I'm curious to see what our plan says in this regard. I hope that this apparent omission is a simple error and can be quickly addressed. But if there is no such plan in place, I trust that steps can be taken to address this soon and better ensure that play CVs and all our students' ability to participate and succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Is the other Rick? Speaker. Okay. I, I do, we usually don't make comments, but I think it's necessary in this case to make this uh, comment. Uh, the ELOP program is brand new. The state actually was hoping to start it this year and they moved it back to the next year with this year being a pilot year and the plan that Mr. Trolley actually mentioned is there is no deadline for it for the reason that the, the state felt that the school districts need to pilot and do a whole bunch of things before they actually bring the plan. So there's no time deadline for the plan. So you will have the plan when we've had some time to pilot and make sure that we bring it to you. But uh, basically that's why it is a requirement, but it is not due until you actually have piloted and have put some things in place. Uh, before you do that. So it's a it's a pilot year. 
and it absolutely um, will include supporting all students. The, the program is actually for students who qualify, who are um, economically disadvantaged, uh, foster youth, um, and I believe that's and uh, not English learners, actually. They changed that for next year. This is why they didn't want the plan due yet. They've changed it because at first it was English learners and we are supporting them. But next year it's, uh, it's economically disadvantaged and foster youth and what else? And, um, housing, yeah. Oh, um, housing insecure. Um, so, but of course the program could include all, um, other students at a, as a uh, based on you know having uh, pay a fee, uh, but for those students it is actually free. Um, anyway, we will have uh, the plan. However, we are piloting and um, this spring and the summer, and we should start with the actual program next year at all of our schools. Right now, it's only at a few schools for the reasons that I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, let's move on to the consent agenda. Sorry, if I'm out of order, just, just tell me. Okay, you are, okay. So um, I would move uh, approval of the consent agenda. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? All right, Jennifer, your preferential vote, please. Yes. Mike? Yes. Gary? Yes. Dolly? Vice President Whitaker? Yes. And my vote is yes, so the consent agenda is approved. All right, we'll move on to reports, discussion, and action items. And the first item is MTSS. And so as the board knows, we have a really robust uh, system of supports, uh, multi-tiered systems of supports, especially our social emotional learning supports. And we have our director of student services and our coordinator of behavioral health here to present and share some of the work that's been going on. So without further ado, Mr. McMaster. Thank you very much and good evening board and community watching and Ms. Amadi and our executive cabinet. I'm going to be very brief because I get to introduce one of uh, our architects of awesome things, who is uh, Miss Marion Meadows, our coordinator of behavioral health. And she is going to, as uh, Dr. Ryman gave an overview of, talk about uh, what some of our MTSS look like this year, um, some of our social emotional learning efforts, as well as our anti-bias, anti-racist efforts, and, and then touch on actually our wellness center a little bit. So it's going to be a robust presentation. I can't wait to to sit back and let uh, Ms. Meadows talk about all the amazing things that have been going on. So, Ms. Meadows. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, I apologize, I opened the door and like the party vibes till we came in here. That's, I was out there enjoying the party, so I ran in here. Um, but I wanna continue the party. We have good news and um, really wanna focus tonight on the role of MTSS, but specifically around student voice. And we heard so much from the, um, our presentations tonight around these amazing teachers, this amazing coaching, um, the amazing communities that have developed here in Kester Valley over many years. And so we're gonna bring um, more of the student voice in place and, and some of it's already in place. So we're just gonna kind of um, highlight those tonight. So a quick quote from um, Ibram X. Kendi is, is a way to kind of set our frame tonight. The quote says, what if we realize the best way to ensure an effective educational system is not by standardizing our curricula and tests, but by standardizing the opportunities available to all students. And, and that is truly the goal of this board and our leadership team is standardizing opportunity, right? So tonight we're gonna to be talking about a piece of that and, and, and talking about how, how do we incorporate student voice in particular into the social emotional side of our MTSS triangle. So again, just a quick visual around our MTSS system, right? We have the academic side, and then we have the social emotional learning side with our tiers. Tonight, we're gonna to be focusing on the social emotional um, learning side of, the, side of the triangle, and in particular, focusing on what role student voice plays in, in most of those pieces. And we'll, we'll get into the wellness center side of it as well. Wellness programs actually larger than just the centers. Um, so when we start talking about student voice, we have to talk about where it already exists 
And Ms. Me, I had to put a picture up here of you because this is one way that our board centers student voice at the top level. The top level of our district is at the board level, right? Um, so obviously our student board member, Jennifer Me, um, very, very happy to have you on this board. And it, it again shows how important it is, right? At the very top levels of our decision-making. Also our district student leadership um, alliance, our DSLA, again, very top half, they, students have uh, direct access to leaders in our district. So that is a really important part. And again, shows the investment in student voice. Um, another example of how we center student voice is an example on the um, wellness side is our development of wellness warriors. And that means um, this year it has been a group of students who are nominated because of their passion for wellness and they become an advisor to the wellness center. And that's something we're gonna replicate at the middle school wellness center level as well. Um, and they, they give all kinds of feedback. They do outreach activities. The idea is that their passion is wellness. And we wanna, we wanna be able to listen to that voice. Another example on the, a little bit more on the academic side is our Trojan Time Student Advisory Committee. So students give feedback on what the Trojan Time lessons look like. That's at Castor Valley High, but it's a model that can be replicated at the other sites. And again, many student leadership groups, clubs on all of our campuses um, are really important pathways for student voice. And one last little um, point about our community circles, which is uh, heads towards our restorative practices. This is a way that, that we create safe space for student voice to come out, um, especially around topics that can be difficult or challenging. Um, you know, if we have any of us have adolescents, we know that, that conversations, they'll tell you exactly what they think and they need to have a space to really get to the deeper issues that are uh, really important to them, not just token token sort of, um, hey kids, what do you think about this topic, right? But really creating this kind of dialogue where we can get to really core issues. And circles uh, allow us to do that. So I'm gonna turn a corner here into some really exciting student voice data that we have. As you know, this board has 100% supported our social emotional learning and anti bias anti racism curriculum work that we've done over the last two years, this is just a reminder of the headers the, the content areas that we provide TK to 12. So creating safe and comfortable classroom environments understanding strength skills and identity understanding and appreciating differences and then getting to understanding bias and discrimination so again that's TK 12. So what we've been working on as we've um, been delivering these lessons is getting feedback from students about what they think about what we're teaching them, right? So this, we're gonna start out with elementary student voice and you, you have already seen, um, as members of the board, you've seen this video before, but I, every time, I, I wanna get this video out as much as possible because it's really, really heartwarming and speaks to our elementary view, elementary students view of the SEL and ABAR work. It's really short. just because of their race, gender, or just like what they believe in or how they look. Discrimination is not good. And we need to stand up for our friends. Because prejudice, discrimination, and racism is happening in the world. And we need to know what is happening in the world for us to stop it. If you don't about these things because it's so normalized in society now and 
um, racism, racism is getting a lot bigger and it's growing a lot faster. And us kids, we can stop that if we just if we learn all about this stuff and we um, and then we can grow, make the world a better place. Right. So that's that's our cat. Those are elementary students, right? That's Castor Valley Elementary. These kids are coming up through our schools. How exciting is this? They're going to be the next gen for me. I can guarantee it, right? They're going to be on this board. These kids already know how to demonstrate, right? They know about science. They know about getting a message out there. They know how to do it already. So I'm very excited about this. Um, again, this set of kids, but also the bravery of the board to make sure that this content is being taught at the elementary level. Again, at the TK level, it's, it's really incredible. It gives me chills every time we, we watch it. So to move to a different set of kids, and um, Mr. Kuziak, you promised you weren't going to uh, ugly cry, but I feel like by the end of this data, maybe I could get you to ugly cry because it's pretty compelling stuff. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, we're moving into uh, secondary student voice around their feedback on the lesson. So this is going to get into some heavy data, but it's really compelling. So at the high school level, um, there were six lessons. Students had to fill out an exit ticket after every lesson. And so this was their feedback. So the first two lessons were on empathy and coping. You can see at the top here, there were 1,085 responses, um, so 1,085 students. Each, each chart, each slide is going to look similarly, but we talk about grade level, it's pretty even split. We asked the question, how would you rate this lesson in terms of being a good use of time? So one is not a good use of time at all, five is a great use of time, so you can see the spread here. And in general, the spread goes towards a good use of time, right? You see, we're going to look at those three, fours, and fives. Um, students, the bar on the left, students thought it was enough time on that particular topic. And then this lower right bar, you'll see what kids thought was the most engaging part, right? The stuff about empathy, personal conversations, or personal connections. Uh, we showed videos. So this is an example of um, the empathy lesson, but 1,000 kids, 1,085 kids responded to this. So what we asked them were for, was for feedback. So this is the real student voice here. These are either, most of these are quotes from students. One student said on the positive side, it was helpful that you pointed out identifying feelings than dealing with them other than avoiding them. That was an important piece. On the constructive side, you can see some of the comments um, that they wanted more interaction and practice. Um, and one of my personal favorites is the one just above that where the kids said, this is a bit repetitive, we know this. That, I take that as a compliment when it comes from high school kids, because you know how long we've been teaching them empathy? Their entire educational career in Castor Valley, right? So I'm, I'm like, yes, good, you're sick of empathy. That means that we have done our job, right? Um, so that, that is good news for us, right, when they know what that content is. I'm going to move on um, kind of quickly through the rest of these restful lessons. So lesson three was a big one. This was on consent. This is the first time we have taught every single kid at the high school a lesson on consent, other than the health classes, which is ninth grade only. This was every student. So you, again, you can see um, 1,255 responses, but look at, the, look at the spread on the three, fours, and fives a good use of time to a great use of time. This is compelling data, and this is not an easy topic, right? They want to know this stuff. They want to talk about it. They want um, information. Um, and again, the um, pieces that they thought, we showed a video, it's called the T video, but it was a really compelling video for students. Um, so we're showing, we're seeing that this data is really uh, compelling around, they think we should be talking about this stuff. So some of the comment themes were around you know, this lesson topic will be helpful in our life and future to give consent and ask for consent are both really important. And it wasn't just sexual consent, it was around all different kinds of consent, boundary setting, you know, that kind of stuff. 
The constructive criticism, and again, you want to know the truth, just ask a teenager, they will tell you, um, give the protocol within the school if this happens. They want to know what do we do? Not just that this is an important topic, but what do we do when it happens? They want um, agency over their, their decision making and their choices. So this is a really great lesson um, as far as what adults can learn from student feedback. I'll move us through the rest of them. Lesson four was on identity. This is the beginning of our ABAR, our anti-bias, anti-racism content. You'll see the three, fours, and fives. Kids really wanted to discuss this. Um, this was a lesson that was shared with the um, Black Student Union, and they did a Black History Month section, so it was student-driven. The students, their, their fellow students thought it was really good use of time. You can see this, this large blue piece of the pie here. Comment themes. Um, Students said, I thought it was really interesting to think about the levels of identity that I don't even think about as being my identity, right? So we're helping kids really dig in there. And then on the constructive side, students want more depth. They wanna know each identity aspect. We felt, felt you left out some groups. They wanna address homophobia um, and really wanting um, more time and more, um, more depth in the lessons. Lesson five was intersectionality. Again, that, that intersectionality is the layers that happen for, for different folks based on their um, social location or, or the identities that they, that they have or that they identify with. You can see the three, fours, and fives. So you're seeing the theme here, right? The kids are not shooting these lessons down at all. They're saying that this is a good use of time. Um, a student comment on the positive, I'm trans and sometimes face discrimination, so it's nice to hear it talked about. That one comment to me makes all of this worth it. Right, that is, that is really compelling and important for us to hear as adults. On the constructive side, students said, you know, teacher buy-in affects, affects lesson experience. That's, that's true across the board, right? If the teacher's into it, the kids will be into it. That's a, that's a common theme. And then the last lesson uh, was on allyship. So how do we, no matter who we identify with, how do we partner, how do we support our, our classmates and our friends and members of the community? Again, look at the three, fours, and fives. Um, and, and again, a little developmental point here, if you get a, a three, which is technically kind of a neutral from a teenager, we'll go with the neutral. That's good. Well, that's good news, right? If they're like, yeah, okay. So we're, again, feeling really positive about these results. Last um, comments on this particular theme. I'm not part of an oppressed group, so this lesson really helped me learn more about being an ally really important skill, really important skill to, to be able to go out into the workforce that's going to be very diverse and be able to, to work alongside uh, lots of different kinds of people. Constructive criticism on this one where they wanted to share more personal experiences in our community. They, they want to have these discussions. So again, the, the takeaways from that particular, from that set of data is, is that they want more, they want deeper, they thought it was a good use of time. And they really liked it when other students were presenting data or information to each other, which again makes sense. I have a little bit of data on Creekside. Um, we did similar lessons there. The, the themes are pretty similar, but I did want to show you one specific, um, one specific piece that was interesting. Again, their um, their date, the Creekside, or sorry, the, the Canyon data is more around the anti-bias, anti-racism work, but look at the three, fours, and fives. So high school kids want to talk about it. Middle school kids want to talk about these. Really important and aligned data for our, for our adolescent, our secondary schools. Um, middle school, you know, the activities were fun and engaging, which really helped me pay attention to the lesson. This is good. On the constructive side, you can see some of their comments about they want more, teach more about how everyone's identity can be unique. Um, in the intersectionality, again, these are, again, the same, same types of ideas, but really wanting more and, and more depth. So I'm going to move us through. So when we get really compelling data like that, we have to, as a system, again, back to the Kendi um, quote, how do, we, how do we standardize access? How do we standardize opportunity? And thinking about how does our system adjust based on what the students are saying that they want? And in this, for this presentation in particular, we're gonna talk a little bit about the wellness centers, but bringing forth student voice about the wellness centers and the wellness programs as well. Not as many slides, it'll go quickly. Um, so just a quick update about the Kessler Valley High Wellness Center, where we had our first full year in the brand new building and it got so much use. <laughs> 
um, were again across from all the ninth, ninth grade health classes. We had 600 plus individual students. That's almost a quarter of the enrollment came through the door. That's individual kids, unduplicated. Um, 3,400 visits. This is already outdated because now we're in May. So many, many kids. We have kids in the courtyard every lunch. Our wellness warriors, as I mentioned before, do a lot of outreach. And what we're finding is that the role on campus is really stabilization. It's not, an, it's not a pathway home at all. It's a pathway back to school, back into class. So that, that has really played out this year. A little outcome data, we did a pre and post for students um, on their stress level. So you can see reductions in um, level of, the, the pie charts here are around feeling good when they come in, uneasy, stressed, or super stressed, and then they check out, same questions. You can see there's a increase in feeling good and better, decrease in stress, decrease in uneasy, and a decrease in super stressed. Right? Um, and just a couple quotes from the Wellness Center. We just recently did a survey um, I love the, the last one. The wellness center can improve by having more snacks, longer breaks, and more information out there about how to get to you. That's real talk, right? Being able to, again, expand that access. Okay, so to move in to Canyon and Creekside, just to kind of spread this conversation out here. Um, again, the Canyon and Creekside Middle School wellness centers are in development, right? There's a, there are rooms identified and there's a little bit going on in there, but it next, but the fall will be the full launches. Um, but it's really exciting to see space, there's social workers in there and working with the current partners like Eden Counseling. Um, Canyon did a pre and post with a small group of students, but around loneliness. And I wanted to bring that to the board to see um, to see the change that can happen with just being part of a group in, in the wellness center. So the way you read this, um, read these charts around the question is, I often feel lonely. This is the pre, the bottom one is the post. Um, and you can see changes in the amount of loneliness based on just being part of a group. That's not changing home life. That's not changing conditions of anything going on. Um, one is not really and five is absolutely. So if you look at um, the, the changes in just the fives, right? They're the reductions in loneliness, just from being, the groups are about six weeks. So important indicators there. Some um, Canyon student voice to bring in this. My, again, the bottom one is my favorite. This was share something you learned in group or liked about group, middle school. I don't know, I mean, I know, I just don't know how to say it, but you would tell me that's normal and fine. And I guess I kind of believe it. Also, it's weird. Can we do group again next year? If you've had a middle school kid, this is classic middle school feedback, but this is this is direct, these are direct quotes from students. Right? This is this is the expanding of access. This is the expanding of opportunity that we're seeing. So that was a a, a bird, like I want to say a bird walk, but it was sort of we're turning corners, right? We're talking about MTSS and talking about SEL ABAR lessons and feedback. We're talking about the wellness centers and the wellness programming. And what we're bringing with that final corner, sliding into home, whatever the metaphor we're going to use is, again, how do we use this feedback? How do we adjust? How does the system adjust to what the kids are asking for? And so what we're doing. Um, currently is sharing it with site leaders. So we have taken the, this, this data to each school, to the to, to staff meetings and said, here is what your students are saying. That part's really important. Um, we wanna continue to share the impact, like the presentation tonight on the SEL lessons and the wellness centers and wellness programming. Um, we wanna track the impact, right? Because they are connected. They, again, they feel like left turns, but they eventually get to a home plate when it comes to the, the ways in which we're affecting our MTSS triangle, right? That all students have access, there's more support for kids that need it. And at, at tier three, the idea is that students are already very much resourced when they get there. And um, again, continuing to build partnerships with community stakeholders, and then expanding the middle school wellness centers. That is our next, that is our next uh, kind of frontier. And the middle schools are ready, um, <clears throat> not just because they have a behavioral health structure, but because the students are asking for it and the community is asking for it, parents are asking for it, and creating this pipeline of, um, it's called the continuum of care, right? They're coming up through elementary, into transitioned into middle, transitioned into high school, and then transitioned into their fabulous future, right? But so with support consistently across the way. 
So that is the end of the presentation. Again, I want to say thank you. This is all based on board decisions. This is all, these are all choices that this board has made to invest in this uh, pathway as we move forward, but want to continue to bring back our student, you know, bring feedback, but also specifically what the students are asking for as we put these uh, interventions and supports into place. So thank you for your support tonight. Miss Meadows is just an amazing, amazing, just like you said, just really builds this whole structure. I wanted to say when we met with the District Student Leadership Alliance, I know Jenny was there and um, one of the things when we said, what does all means all mean to you? They said access opportunity. And we asked them, what are some of the things that you would use as an example of us actually doing that? The wellness center was one of them. So again, you know, kudos to you and your work, but this is so important. I, I want to echo your, your sentiments about the board because this, this was something you had been working on for years and it's happened. And the fact that organically our middle schools have, so congratulations and, and thank you for all your support as we do this work. Any questions or comments from the board? Oh, hello, right there in front of me, Vice President Whitaker. <laughs> Thank you, um, President Theodore. Uh, you know, the lovely thing about this work is it, it's the integration in different aspects. So we're not just doing one thing. We're integrating it into the communities and the education. And you can just see, I mean, Mike didn't ugly cry, but I did. So... <laughs> Um, just being able to see the integration of all the things we've been working to towards and seeing it, it, seeing those responses to me was really powerful. I mean, kids want this, kids need this, and, and it's working. And so thank you so much to the whole team and all the work that you're continuing to do to make this happen. Mike and then Dolly. Uh, one comment and then two questions. I, I just wanted to address Doc, Gary, and Lavender. And just thanks. Thank you. I mean, if there's ever a legacy, this is it. I mean, this is a paradigm shift in, in, in how we're thinking about uh, the health and safety of our students. And so it's wonderful to see that's being a catalyst uh, within our district going into the middle schools. And that that's, goes to my question. What is a wellness center in the middle school? How does it look different from a high school one? And then how is there a role for something like a wellness center as we move into our elementary schools? I know some of our elementary schools are doing like resource centers, which is kind of an expanded scope there, but how does it change in sort of maybe age appropriate, it's not correct, but sort of developmentally appropriate? Like I, how, what are the needs? And I think there's about, they're absolutely right. They're, they're age appropriate, developmentally appropriate pieces. So how about I'll, I'll start at elementary and then we'll squish middle, middle school will be the baloney in the sandwich here. So the elementary piece, um, Stanton does have a family resource center, and the idea is is supporting families to be able to help their student, um, especially at that level. Element, we're we're all as parents, we're all learning whatever our kid, whatever level our kid is at, we're learning how to parent that kid at that moment, right? So we are actually all need support, but at elementary, it makes more sense because the the kids are more embedded in the family, and if the family unit's healthy, the student will will be stable. Um, so I, I think it does look like family resource centers and figuring out how how do we best support, not, you know, it, 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 when we talk about need, it's largely the, the misconception is that it's mental health. It's really wellness as we shift that, which is healthy families, health, basic needs, having communication, coping skills. That's the bulk of the work. And at elementary, that's really um, that that in, especially in partnership with teachers at the elementary level, I think that family resource part is definitely the model to go with. When I come to middle school, they're just starting to figure out, you know, it's it's early puberty. They're figuring out their emotions. Um, high school is too, but you know, if you've ever taught in middle school or had a middle schooler, you know it's 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 up and down. So at the middle school level, the, the model is similar in the sense that they're still drop in, they're still gonna be grouped, they're still individual, but the, the wellness centers tend to be a little bit more on the community center model where a club can host a meeting in there, parents can have a meeting in there. Um, 
there can, there's the, the activities that are there are more pro, they're more pro social in a sense that they they're learning how to do really basic social interactions with each other that normalizes um, not just the being in the building, but it normalizes that adults can come in and out of kids lives and kind of meddle in their social learning. <laughs> in a way that's um, I say that lovingly and in a healthy way, but the idea that um, we're all learning how to get along with each other and that can happen in the wellness center at middle school right we're teaching wellness so by the time they hit high school. Then they have a better high school students tend to have a better sense of what specific things they want to work on or what specific things are bothering them. And they have the vocabulary to talk about it. That's why talk therapy works a little bit better at high school. Middle school, it's a lot of games. You're playing basketball, you're teaching them um, vocabulary around their how to identify feelings and how to communicate where they're at. So it's again, it's all you're, you use exactly the right words. It's just age appropriateness. So family learns that that vocabulary at elementary. We're teaching the vocabulary at middle, and then moving into high school, we're helping be able to kind of talk through. Um, problems or concerns in a more sort of adult adult fashion that's that's how I kind of describe the differences. Um, we do I will say this we do need families all along the way, we need parents all along the way, and as they get older, we think they don't need us, they think the kids will push them away, but they actually need us more than ever. Um, just in a different way, so I, I, I do want to build that part that parental participation part along that pathway as well we're working on that. That was a long answer, but wanted to hit all levels. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to make a comment. Um, having been a counseling and rich teacher for a number of years, I would always um, see other kids in the school, uh, general ed kids, and always wish that they could have some of the resources that I had in my room. And now, of course, with the Wellness Center at uh, CV, um, HS, it's it's here and it's moving into the middle schools and and eventually uh, elementary schools as well and also the as you call it wellness center because sometimes it isn't really mental health a uh, kid may not have a pair of shoes uh, and we have to figure out how to you know get him or her a pair of shoes so that they can go to school and things like that so thank you for all the great work you're doing All right. Um, so I also agree that the SEL lessons are very useful. Um, we were talking about this at the DSLA meeting. Um, it's really interesting to like hear the shared or even like different perspectives on a certain topic. But we notice like sometimes there's also a block, which is like, you know, you may feel like shy or like timid or like, you know, on like these touchy subjects um, to like speak up or whatever, or like share with your class of like 30 people that you don't really know. Um, so we thought it'd be cool to like, do like a pair dagger, you know, like the anonymous sharing. But yeah, um, something else I've also like heard, and I saw this on one of the slides also, is like it is like frustrating to lose like instruction time, like one on one time with your teacher um, for the LCL lessons. But like I understand because they're also like useful. Um, something else I wanted to add is like I go to the wellness center like often and I go there worrying about a lot of things. But one of the things I never worry about is like my privacy there. like you know like the people that are super nice i'm never worried that oh like what if they like share my secrets or something like that so i just want to say like that's something um i never have to worry about which i'm very glad thank you well thank you very much for that presentation thank you everyone all right we will move on to item b Item B is a resolution that we pass um, each year, uh, declaring June 2022 this year to be les the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, LGBTQ plus pride month. I would like to move that we adopt resolution 61-21-22 and, oh, well, no. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Are there any questions? Jenny, your preferential vote. Can we make a comment? Sure. Yeah, um, I, I'm grateful we have this on the agenda. Um, I going back to the previous pre presentation about I'm a trans, I am trans, and sometimes face discrimination. Um, you don't have to look too far and see in this moment that we're in. There's a lot of politicians. Um, 
othering kids, um, erasing their identities, trying to not face that they're real people, they're, they're our kids. So I just, I appreciate that we are a district that, that's not just doing resolution. This isn't just performative, right? The, our values are to protect all of our kids. And um, particularly right now, we need to, we need to, we need our voices to be heard to protect all of our kids. So I just, I wanted to say that. <laughs> I actually, um, if I could just add a couple of things. Just recently, uh, Ms. Meadows and four other um, administrators, three other administrators and teachers went to a the first uh, AXA Pride Symposium. And I know they were really excited to be there and brought back a lot of ideas. It's, it's incredible to even have that in the state in California. And I'm just so grateful that they were able to go. The other thing I wanted to say, the progress pathways that you voted for are happening um, and they're, they're coming up. I know, it, and that's why your comment about this is not just a resolution is a really important one because they've done a lot of work around this. They, you know, and, and I know you're in the wellness um, uh, committee group. So there's just a lot happening um so that it's not just a symbolic thing it's real stuff um and i think in the fall when students come back all the pathways or wherever the murals will be done when they return so thanks to you and your vote and also our facilities department susie i just wanted to mention that of course um the uh, public will see the the pride flags at all of the schools in June. Jenny, your preferential vote? Yes. Mike? Yes. Jerry? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Vice President Whitaker? Yes. My vote is yes. So the uh, resolution is approved. All right. We will move on to uh, Lavender. Don't forget the personnel report. No, I know. <laughs> okay, I'm got moving it. on to it right now. Thank you. <laughs> Um, moving on to the personnel report. I would move that we approve it. All right. All right. Um, are there any questions? All right, Mike, your vote, please. Yes. Jerry? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Vice President Whitaker? Yes. And I will vote yes. So the personnel report is approved. Superintendent's report. I'll be quick. We had a SOAR meeting, and it was a great one because um, everybody was there. We've had two community um, engagement meetings uh, this week. We had the Arab American, and last week we had the Native American. It was amazing. Um, we, I went to the choir performance, Miss Sadaway, as always, and the students were in just wonderful. Um, and Battle of the Valley football game that many of you were at, fun, lots. The first time we've all got together kind of like that. We've been delivering cookies this week to our classified and certificated for teacher the day of the teacher and classified um, appreciation week. Um, please check the calendar for the retiree event is changed to June 1st. Um, so we just had to change that. Um, check your email also, um, because we're gonna we're doing videos on measure G and if you could sign up, that would be great. Um, strategic planning meeting follow up um, to finalize things is June 14th and that's on your calendar. Um, and then if you could change uh, just in the next couple of weeks, there are lots of things happening so checking your emails every day I know you're very, very busy with your jobs but but if you could check. Um, because there will be information for like graduation promotions end of the year activities. And then I wanted to um, just say that the workshops, the classified workshops that have been uh, implemented have been really, really awesome. And I just, you know, today I know Amy was doing a workshop with like 50 people online. So it's been great to have that um, offered and, uh, and those things are happening, continuing to, um, we're continuing with that. Thank you. All right, uh, we will move on to board member comments and reports. Jenny. Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> um, I don't have anything like specifically board related, but I have like stuff like school related. So I did go to NCS for CVHS, the CVHS swim team on Friday, and we have um, one swimmer, Samantha Lee, moving on to States this following week. Um, I also went to BOV and I saw Miss Amadi there. 
Even though Canyon won, I think the Creekside cheerleaders killed it. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, and of course I went to prom and I won prom court, so yay. Congratulations. Um, I also participated in SOAR. Again, what, what S-O-A-R means we're pulling people together in our community to have conversations about how we can properly resource our schools. So I really appreciated the conversations of the creative creativity coming from our community. Um, the equity task force, I, I just shout out to Jason for a, creating a space where there's really important candor and a reflection about how we're doing in our equity work. Um, I also experienced the battle of the valley. Um, and I, I want to compliment your coaching skills of the cheerleaders, the Creekside cheerleaders. Yeah. SOAR stands for Schools, Outreach, and Resources. But Mr. Howard probably had it down. Same thing, pretty much. <laughs> Strategic planning meeting, and I was at the SOAR meeting with Mike. I uh, also got to go to the Puente end of year celebration, which was really nice at the high school. Um, I visited uh, Redwood School uh, this week or last week, forgotten now almost, uh, uh, and got to speak to the, the relatively new principal up there, which was good. I was really happy to talk to him. And I spent uh, Thursday evening in an ROP meeting uh, and then all day Friday and Monday in interviews to find a new superintendent over there. So a lot of ROP time this week. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was at uh, the equity task force. Of course, all of us were at the strategic planning meeting, but it was a very good meeting. Very, I, I really enjoyed that meeting quite a lot. Um, and I went to, I've been going to a few of the League of Women Voters um, symposiums on all the candidates that are running to, uh, if they they weren't in, uh, if I hadn't met them before, I wanted to have some time to, to look at them and see what they would say and how they answered questions and whatnot. Thank you. Vice President Whitaker. I have not represented the board since the last time we all see, saw each other. However, I will be um, out of town tomorrow through Sunday, but available by phone and email. And then I go on vacation on the 19th. Thank you. Um, I also have not represented the board, um, but I did go to the band concert last week and it was fantastic. They're really amazing. Um, and tomorrow I will be attending the PACES end of year celebration. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are going to recess to close session and we'll come back to close out the meeting afterwards. Thank you.
We are returning from closed session and we took no further action or we took no action in closed session um, and our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>